Hello and welcome to a Spaced Out Radio edition of The Angry Ghost Hunter. My name is Dave Scott, host of Spaced Out Radio. And once a month, the final Wednesday of every month, we bring you a paranormal special here on The Mighty SOR, where we bring in The Angry Ghost Hunter with the team of Ross Allison. We have Merle. And of course, we have Jacob Rice right here, where we get into the topics that we want to see helped and fixed and promoted in everything paranormal. And gentlemen, hello, how are you this month? Surviving the heat, that's definitely the truth. <laughs> so very true. Well, you know what, like it, actually, it actually brings up a good opening question before we get real serious. Does this type of heat actually affect paranormal activity? Never mind the investigators, I'm saying the ghosts. Well, you know, there is some theories that, of course, heat is energy, and there have been some situations where I've personally been in a really hot room and have experienced some extreme paranormal phenomena. So it's very possible. What do you think, Merle? Uh, I, I would agree with Ross. That would be definitely a good way to find cold spots. If, uh, oh, yeah, so, you, you we're stole my line. That, you like... stole my line. <laughs> One of us had to say it. <laughs> But no, um, for me, I'm pretty fair weathered. I will, I will go ghost hunting till my heart's content in minus twenty, minus twenty five. But you put me anywhere in Canada's twenty five to thirty. I don't know if that is an American. Nope, too hot, <laughs> too hot. <laughs> Merle, so I'm gonna get you to bring your camera down just a little bit because uh, your uh, chin is being cut off there. There we go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You no know worries. that high quality facial hair you have there. <laughs> you don't want to be known as no chin Merle. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Martin that. <laughs> yeah. No so, all right, let's get right into it, gentlemen, because one of the topics that continues to haunt, notice the play on words there, to haunt <laughs> the paranormal field is everything is these goddamn demons. All right, let's just get into it right off the bat, Jake. Are we being demonized or are we being? We're being hyperbolized, uh, Dave. Hyperbolized, We've okay. Been, they're, they're bringing the sensationalism. They're bringing the hyperbolism. Because let's be real, at the end of the day, I mean, do we even know what a demon really is if we're saying? I mean, these could be interdimensional beings. It may have nothing to do with heaven and hell. And it could just be a very, very pissed off granny because you're not paying attention to her when she's giving you these signs. So, son, you might get a shove. You might get a scratch. And it's just, hey, wake up. Listen to me. I wouldn't necessarily call it a demon, even though it's creeping you out and you might have some negative connotations. And that's why you do the investigation. There you go. All right, Ross, what do you think about demons? Oh, there's a lot I can talk about on this. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, yes, um, media has really been hyping demons quite a bit. But uh, the thing is, is, of course, it's more drama. You know, a lot of these shows want drama. But I've always told people, yeah, you can have a, a, a very um, kind of a jerk of a person, not to get into some cuss words here, but um, <laughs> I'd have to say that it's very possible that even those people, when they pass on, can carry on those very negative traits. Just because you have a situation where you've been pushed or scratched does not necessarily mean it's a demon. But here's another thing that I want to bring to the table is if you go to scripture, a demon is not going to identify itself as a demon. So when you watch these ghost hunting shows, and of course the ghost box says, oh my God, demon, <laughs> or the ovulus says demon, a demon is not going to do that. A demon is actually, their main purpose is to manipulate the living to commit sin. And so what they're going to do is they're going to pretend to be your aunt, you know, Jenny or your, your cousin Victor or your, or your dad or your mom or somebody you're very close to and pretend to be that individual to get you to commit sin. They're not going to, you know, if you call out to a room of, of ghosts and say, is there a demon in the room? It's going to rave its hand and say, oh, yeah, I'm right over here. You know, so that to me is even ridiculous. But we also have to deal with the fact that um, exorcisms are very popular now on a lot of these ghost hunting shows. And you see these young exorcists, you know, coming into play. And if, again, you know, bringing in the church into this, this topic, it, you don't get to exorcise a demon as part of, you know, your, you know, coming into priesthood. Oh, you're just joining us. Well, let's get you out there and do an exorcism right away. No, the people that are responsible for doing exorcisms are those who have been lifelong priests. 
You know, they say that you're supposed to be without sin. You're supposed to be so committed to the scripture. You should have been somebody who has read the Bible from the beginning to the end before you can actually, you know, give off, you know, an exorcism. You know, it's not going to be somebody who's taken a two hour course online and has now been given a certificate of being a demonologist. Cool so title. there's just so many problems when it comes to the term demonology and demons in the field. So that's just keeping it short. <laughs> yeah, but demons, demons, Ross, are sexy. They're sexy for television. They create great storylines. They create great fear. Fear brings ratings. And, well, yeah. and that's what that's what we're seeing all over the place, whether it's television or from Hollywood. Well, I know, like I said, it, it's a hot topic because it, it brings in the viewers. But, you know, as we want to do with the show, we want to keep it open and honest. And people just need to understand that a lot of problems that we have in this field is now everybody wants to be calling themselves a demonologist and wants to go in and get rid of the demons or even tell clients that they're dealing with that they have a demon in their home. And now these people are so terrified that they want out of their house, whether they can even afford to move or not, they will put themselves in financial you know, danger just because they're now so terrified thinking that there is something out to harm them or even kill them. It's crazy seeing the Facebook forums because I'm, I'm part of a lot of ghost Facebook forums. I like to read all the latest ghostly media stuff. Um, so many people specialize in being exorcists now, or they specialize in demonology when they're like half of probably any of our age. Um, I think being a demonologist is kind of like a street cred that people like to use. It, it, I think some people think it bumps them up to be like a presti prestigious paranormal investigator. But as for like demons, I think they're rare, slim to none. Um, I think there's a lot of angry spirits. Like, like I've said before, if a person's generally an ass in person, they're probably going to be like that in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to somebody's house saying, knock on this wall right now, I demand you spirit, they're going to be annoyed. If someone came into my house and said that, I'd be like, go after mm -hmm. yourself. Like, and they're probably doing the same thing when you're investigating. Sometimes spirits want to talk to you and you can't make them talk to you. Well, another thing too, that I think is a, a big problem is Again, if you're trying to claim that you're a scientific investigator, you can't be biased by being led by religion. And so if you're a scientist, a scientific investigator, and now you want to go out and say, oh, there's demons in these homes, already you're being biased. And to be scientific, you have to be unbiased. You have to go with what you know and not with what you think you know or mm -hmm. what you want to believe to know. So that's another big problem, too. Like when we do investigations, we use, if it's a negative haunting to like a minimal haunting to a nothing haunting, we, we do the same formula of questions to ask the people we're investigating or the, the property owner, the same process of doing all the baseline readings. And then that's how we spit out what we feel it is when we're done our complete research and investigation. You can't have some lady saying there's a demon in my house. And then you go there and be like, hey, yeah, there is. There's there's more to it than that. But from watching all like the conjuring one, two, three to eight and all, <laughs> all of the Annabelles, people that's what gets unfortunately, that's what gets people into the investigating into the paranormal. I'm guilty. I remember the show sightings way back in like the nineties, oh, yeah. late eighties. Mm -hmm. That was my jam. And then it went from, from there, I went to Ghost Hunters and Unsolved Mysteries. But that's what hooked me into like being curious amongst like personal experiences. Yeah, but it but gives a people of, a false reality of what's really out there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm getting at. Like, So they watch The Conjuring, and then they want to be the next Ed and Lorraine Warren. So you get the, the two people going in. One has the little rosary on their hand and carrying a Bible. They probably only open when they're at investigations <laughs> and hoping for the best. For one, I, I like to use respect when I go to investigations, but in all honesty, you have no clue what you're dealing with. It could be it could be oh. that there could be that one house you go to that has a demon in it. Mm -hmm. And you can't just expect it to be a demon. You gotta play the card. Well, let me let me ask you guys this. Have any one of you three ever come across a demon? And and for the public listening to this, how rare is it to actually come across something of a demonic nature? Well, for me, I'm not gonna say demon. 
I, you know, I will not go to those terms because, again, that's acknowledging a religious bias. And I try to be respectful and open to everybody's religious beliefs. You know, like I said, I try to pursue it on a scientific, you know, spectrum. But the thing is, is yes, I have gone into places where I've encountered something very negative. You know, I got to investigate the place where the exorcist case took place. You know, so there was a pl there is something very negative there. It it cussed me out. Still to um, this day, do you think there's something negative there? Of course, yeah. yeah. But I'm not going to say it's a demon because I don't know enough. We don't mm -hmm. know enough about the paranormal field that we can, you know, s label everything and say yes, this is a demon. Because again, a demon's not going to tell you it's a demon. No. <laughs> So, you know, you can go into places and experience very negative activity. And I'm mm. not saying that it's not out there. Yes, there are very negative encounters that people do experience. But it also could be just an asshole, you know, <laughs> just somebody <laughs> who doesn't, you know, like the you fact that you're in their home. They're very territorial. Yeah. You know, maybe they get their rocks off by scaring the shit out of you. I would. You know, mm -hmm. it's very possible. But the fact of the matter is we cannot call it a demon when we don't have enough information about this field. I agree. Hmm. Okay. okay, Merle, how about you? Have you ever encountered a demon? No, but like Ross, I've encountered some pretty negative things in my time, but nothing that I, I would throw out the D word. Um, mm -hmm. No, if for me, if, if I... Unless we're talking. If I <laughs> thought something was going to be a demon, or if I'm like, oh, sh shoot, man, this could actually be a demon based on the traditional like checklist that collectively has been seen over years and years and years of more traditional people versus now times, then I would probably direct them to a church or I would direct them to somebody that I trust that's been in the field forever that knows contacts or what to do. That's how I would deal with it. And then I would approach a case where I think could have a potential demon as a team with a panel of people. Mm -hmm. So no. how about you, Jake? So I've had this one case, and I'll, I'll say I just consulted on this one because it came through my website, and it dealt with a very, very religious family, Catholic, outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And they would keep bringing in the priest to do blessings. They were having like poltergeist-type activity, no fires, but the kind of thing where there was a lot of shoving phenomenon, things moving. And as the priest kept coming in, they the activity got worse and worse. And so I'm like, have you tried talking to a shaman? I mean, if, you know, it could be a be... Jewish ghost. You yeah, know. for one thing. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in that neck of the woods, I was thinking more a Navajo or Apache. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, have you thought about talking to a shaman or because if you're bringing in the priests, if you think about it, that would have been the devil to native Americans, indigenous folks. Mm -hmm. And so they did get a shaman. To come in, um, I don't know what type of shaman. I'm, I'm assuming it came, he came from the tribe, uh, and things settled down after that. So, just, I mean, your activity itself could be so agitating, or however you're going about, say, clearing a demon, could be the antithesis of what the spirit is, and it just ramps things. But it's not really a demon. You just, we, you just we, we got one minute to go before we're going to change up topics here tonight. Final word on demons, Jake. Uh. You know, could be negative entities, could be poltergeists or psychic phenomena and stuff. Actual demons, no. Earl? I second Jake. Ross? Again, I, I just have to say, if you really are trying to be scientific in your research, you cannot be biased by any religion. Just go with the actual facts and try to measure as much as you can to help us all to determine what's going on in the paranormal world. And once, again, we, and once again, we want to remind people who are here listening to The Angry Ghost Hunter. It's a monthly feature we do on Spaced Out Radio's YouTube channel every final Wednesday of the month with Ross Allison, Merle, and Jake Rice. And the next topic, gentlemen, is gadgets. All three of you, I'm going to call you a bunch of geeks because you love your technology. <laughs> all right. You love your toys. You love your bright lights that shine up. Jake, you're probably the worst of them all. And it's I mean that with all due all due love and respect, my friend. <laughs> all right. But but take us to it. Give us the gadget of the week or the month of the year or the decade. Okay, so I got I got two gadgets. It's the same kind of concept here. Let me bring them up, and and Merle will know this one. I like the I drink Merlot a lot or Merlot. <laughs> uh, it is. You might have seen these. 
I this like that. Is... I have one. Well, yeah, like so it. yeah, so this is the Polter Tune. It's the kind of gadget, and you've seen them on a lot of the Ghosty shows, of course. Uh, the biggest users of this one would be Ghost Adventures and Destination Fear. If you keep up on the shows, because I keep up on all the shows. And what it does is, it's like the Ghost Hunter's Dream, right? All you have to do is walk in and turn it one on. Button. One button gives you a nice little sound to let you know something is breaking the beam. Okay. So with this gadget overall, you got like a five foot range. So that's this one. The next one I bring out is going to be a bit uh, bigger. Same concept though. And if anything breaks this little infrared beam that comes out here, you're going to hear, you're going to hear the chime. So it's great. You just point it at a hallway across the hallway. It works like a little trip wire. It in should just say demon instead of the music <laughs> box. Demon tune. It should. It should. <laughs> but the thing that I found out with mine is it never shuts up. There's you gotta always. Hack you got to hack for that. <laughs> Turn it so, off and on a few times and it's good to go. See, so the whole thing is, do you really need to turn it off and on so much when you just drop 200 bucks US for it? Yes. Okay. The other one's a bit expensive. So, uh, yeah, you know, you can't really count it because it's the kind of thing like with a, especially if you're in a dusty location, old place, abandoned, something like that. You're going to have bugs moving around. Literally anything that trips this thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be a spirit. It's going to go off. You think you're going to got, you're going to get something. There's like no range with it. Doesn't tell you if it's coming or going. Nothing. You just spent two hundred bucks. For a beam and like the little music box. It's a motion great. sensor. Yeah, it's just a motion yeah. sensor. It's like the grocery, the grocery doors, grocery you know, store doors. When I had my tour at the local museum, one of the ladies who helped us out actually got a motion sensor dolly because mm -hmm. we knew we had a little girl in there. She mm -hmm. paid like 30 bucks for it at Walmart, set it up. Okay. And we always faced it away from the hallway. So in case people were walking down the hallway, people wouldn't set it off. That thing would go off every now and again. Mm -hmm. we, we knew we had a cat in the house. We knew we had a little girl in the house. Mm -hmm. And I just can't imagine when I can spend $30 for the same type of, of toy or $200 because, or $250 American because this is made by a, a ghost hunting manufacturer. You know, like, I just can't see that. Like, to me, that's a waste of money. I'm sorry to yeah. sound negative, but what a waste of money. Yeah, they, they are banking on ghost hunting tools. And the yeah. sad thing is, is a lot of people are paying these ridiculous amounts uh, for something that probably only cost them 20 bucks to build. I made a REM yeah. pod that I was selling for like 75% less than what like ghost stores sell it for. Because mm -hmm. there's a ton of people up here that ask me where I get the gear. And I'm like, oh, I buy it from this website or this website. It was, it was only 250 American. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then that, that's what I did. I, I built a couple of very cheap REM pods. No, yeah. easy. Anyone can make them. Yeah, they're not they're not so bad with the sensor boards and everything like that. I have mm. to buy one from you, Merle, just just to say I bought one from you, Merle. But same concept here. <laughs> yeah, same concept here. This one's even more expensive. So this is the one that Ghost Adventures loves, and that's the paranormal music box shaped like a nice little coffin, right? Same concept. You just turn it on. It baselines. Look, you get a nice little light but when we were testing this one so there you go i like this one because the music's a little bit creepier uh same concept you point point at something this one is supposed to give you about four to five meters of range okay um but ross if you remember this when we did the astoria ghost hunt we mm -hmm. put this in the special room with all the uh creepy dolls and other things we had set up to detect kids and stuff and we tested it before lo and behold it really only had a range of about two feet. Not even two feet. Five Not inches. even two feet. Two feet. So you I, drop. I mean, I was like waving my hand in front of it and it wasn't even good. <laughs> so this so was like, oh, two feet. If I, yeah. So it was like 400 bucks for this thing. US. Okay. And you know, it's, it's nothing more than like the grocery store uh, doors, right? You approach this one sends out some uh, infrared, some ultrasonic beams and stuff much like, your grocery uh and it looks nice it looks cool it's good on tv but at the end of the day you know i don't know if i would bank on it for this much there's other things you could be using 
you don't have to spend. And that's, that's been a topic of the show is you don't really need to spend as much for these gadgets. I just have my haunted gadget museum and traveling road show that so I collect these things, but uh, eh. And it's also the kind of thing that you're guaranteed to get a ghost. So when we get into the media review later, we'll have some of that stuff coming up. We call it fast food ghost hunting. I and like it. I, I would say this, this one and this one, because I have tested them extensively. I can say you might want to spend your mo money in other places just because Zach uses it. Doesn't mean you have to. So the I gotta, I gotta ask you guys, if you don't yeah. mind, is the whole pull behind the expense behind the paranormal gear is they want to take advantage of the popularity and it's yeah. not really about the cost. It's about making money where you can. Mm. So I built the exact same REM. Like I'm going to bring up the REM pod example again, just for cost. So I use the exact same circuit board to a T brand and everything as the uh, where did everyone go keep going merle yeah i use the exact same rem pod circuit board as the 400 hundred dollar dollar rem pods that you buy on all the popular ghost hunting websites mm -hmm. the exact same board the exact same wiring and so for me to build this cost 60 dollars american at most and then yeah. it probably, and then, so these guys, they'll buy all this crap in mass, mass amounts. So it's even less. And for me to make my thing, it takes less than 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I had my friend design, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, one of those 3D printer thingies. He made like a cool box for it. Other than that, it's, they, 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 they totally bank on, on money because a lot of the gear we buy, it's cheap. It breaks. Like half of my IR lights that I bought, they break. Hmm. Yeah. So I start making my own. Yeah, well, I mean, the they build it stuff. very cheaply and then yeah. charge you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't I know mean, how many people I, I I meet that you know are paycheck to paycheck, and they're you know scraping every little penny they can to save, to spend you know three four hundred dollars or even more on a device that I can tell them is not worth your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you end up having these arguments with them, and they it's like, well, it's on the ghost hunting shows. Yeah, it's proven to, be, to be, you know, real. true. I'm yeah, like, oh. you would be surprised at how much you, you could get away because I mean, this is don't get me wrong, this is a pretty solidly built gadget compared to like this one. This is just plastic over a couple of sensors, right? Although Jake, uh, I'll, I'll I'll say it, I had so I had some pretty good response on the Polter Tune once. Yeah, I mean, we debate. We debated technique we here. Well, that's for a different. That's for a different <laughs> time. Uh, but this this is pretty solidly built. They yeah. took care and craft with this one. I'm just saying, its range is not necessarily what it claims to be, and still because be it's not down. giving it's not giving you range or anything like that. I find the utility of it to be a bit limited. But, um, the, big, a, but the big thing is, let me say this real quick. What are these devices proving? Correct. Absolutely nothing. True. Yeah. All yeah. of our motion sensors. So and, and that goes into a, a big question that we have. Please tell us a scenario for the people listening out there where during a, a ghost hunt they would use one of these. What would be the ideal scenario? So in my case, when I use it, I use it with trigger objects quite a bit so you know i like we just did an investigation mind you i didn't use one of these gadgets there but it's the kind of thing i put out some toys because we we're in a hospital that had a kid's ward um and i wanted to see if anything was approaching so i would put this across to see if anything would trip it because i'm standing there with a the camera mind you i'm using other gadgets to mm -hmm. corroborate if this thing goes off like i have an eddie plus it picks up movement so if that thing started to chime and one of my other gadgets was also going off, I'm like, okay, we have a stronger case. We're having two data points. It's always good to have three or more data points saying there's anomaly present, but you're right. All it says is there's an anomaly. True. I think the Polter tune or like the one that you had, that other one would be mm -hmm. good for places that are older, old time music type places because of the, mm -hmm. The sound yeah, the the, box. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good, that would be a good trigger for, yeah, those type of places. But yeah. you also have to understand the equipment and how it's made or what kind of sensors they're using because mm -hmm. when it comes to motion sensing, it could be light anomalies mm -hmm. or it could be heat anomalies. And if you don't know what this Correct. device uses, 
you know, your shadow could set it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you is know? true. Infrared. Infrared can go off with shadows. But I will say, I've got the instructions, right? Such a fancy gadget. And in the case of the Paranormal Music Box, uh, the first half is in Swedish, <laughs> then it's in English. Uh, and this is all we have for instructions and information about it. Wow. And it just says, you turn it on, you point it, it's easy to use. A little bit about how the light sensor works to set it off. And that's it. And then the para, para force uh, polter tune is a little bit better, but still. <laughs> still a Word document. Yeah, pretty much. So they've got a little more information on the website, so I'll, I'll give it to them. Oh, by the way, I have to declare I did buy the gadgets with my own money, so I'm allowed to give my free opinion. There you go. That's for the censors. So, Jake, do you think people should buy these? No, I don't. I think you should invest in other things. And if you want the same kind of effect, you know what? Put the powder out on the floor. <laughs> there you go. And see there if anything go. crosses it or, or or dusts it up and stuff. If you want to, if you want to go low tech, I've always wanted to do that, right? I actually haven't done the powder test because you know I'm like a gadget guy. Uh, Back in the day, we did it, <laughs> but it is so messy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we could have used it at the place because uh, the place from Friday because there's enough dust. Uh, <laughs> we could have just swept it up and used it. But there, there's other things I would I would do versus this one. Um, if you're going to do motion detection, there, there is one gadget I'd recommend for it, and it, it tested well. That's the 360 motion puck. I would say spend your money there because yeah, that, like one, that one. Yeah, that one. I did a review. That one, it, it, as they described it, it worked exactly like they described it. So I, I've got the review on Ghostly. Um, that that's one. It's got still got some gotchas, but that one okay. worked as. I, I gotta described. ask you though, Jake. I mean. Yeah. Is it, isn't gear subjective? Like, and, and the reason why I say that is I know things have worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. I'm mm -hmm. looking at Merle. Okay. You know, he's kind of giving the wishy-washy because you're saying don't buy it. And he's like, eh, I know he wants to say, well, I kind of like it, but, but he's a gearhead, like but mm -hmm. he's a gearhead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just because it doesn't work for you, how do we know it's not going to work for me or or someone else? You know, it, you know, and it could all be the situation it's used in, uh, and could be the way I use it. I mean, I'm just following the instructions they gave me. Like when See, I, I wouldn't consider it class A evidence using an object no. like that. That's no, what I'm saying. It's just like this well, doesn't prove anything. Yeah, no. it, it you know, needs it, to... it doesn't help us in the paranormal field. It's just those you know bells and whistles that people mm -hmm. like to see on the television shows. It proves nothing. Yes, and there's ways to improve it for one thing because it's Dave, it's subjective because it doesn't give you any data. Right. Okay, so with about 45 seconds to go before we change topics tonight, what I'm hearing out of you guys is say, look, if you guys are serious ghost hunters and you really uh, are 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 hardcore of what you're doing and you want to solve some answers, this isn't the product for you. However, if you want to go play ghosts, you're a weekend warrior, you want to go have some fun, you know, maybe walking down a trail or in a cemetery, this may be something that you want to look at, although you're going to be spending a lot of money. Am I you're correct? You're going to be spending a lot of money and they tell you not to use them outside. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, I'd True. agree with that. <laughs> you can't use them outside. There's other, there's nice other things. Recorder. Yeah, but if you mm. want to have fun, get your binary. Oh, yes no kind of thing all right i guess fine it's awfully expensive i'd buy a all camera right. All, right, all right ladies and gentlemen we are at the point now where we're going to change subjects this is the pre-show to spaced out radio tonight where we will have mark sims on the show but first we got another half hour of the angry ghost hunter we do it the final wednesday of every month led by ross allison jake rice and of course merle merle Yes, we love Merle around here. We really do. Now, gentlemen, I want to get into the next topic because one of the big things we're seeing a lot of right now is people talking a lot of woo in the media from UFOs and aliens all the way down to what we see on television on a weekly basis with paranormal ghost shows and ghost stories, ghost adventures, ghost this, ghost that, ghost cracker jacks, and, you know, <laughs> come here, little ghosty, so I can spank your butt. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. All right. We got it going on. Let's talk about the media and the way they treat this subject. Ross, let's start with you. Well, you know, like I said, uh, we've already talked about the fact that everything is going into demons, 
you know, that's the big thing. I, I've stopped watching a lot of the shows just because as I, I watch all of these shows and I start screaming at the fact that they don't even know how to use their equipment correctly or they're using very suggestive devices or even a music box to determine whether there's a ghost there. You know, that that's a little frustrating for me because I've always been fighting for credibility in this field. So, you know, I, I do enjoy a good ghost movie, though. Um, I just saw, what was it, uh, Things Heard and Seen? I think that's what okay. it's called. Mm -hmm. It started out really good. I, I, I really was thinking I might really like this movie. And then, of course, like all these ghost movies, the ending completely Always. sucked. Always. I'm like, God, why can't we find any good endings to a lot of these good you know, ghost movies? Or at least start out as good ghost movies. You know, even I love the woman in black. The woman in black mm -hmm. is like one of my favorite ghost yeah. movies, you know, and then some of the older ones back in the day. I'm know? watching 21 days tonight. I haven't seen that one. Oh, yet. I don't know that one. That one looks good. It looks it's okay. probably going to suck at the end, but it looks good. It's about a paranormal team locking themselves up in a cursed house that is. Oh, okay. I've seen previews. Okay. That's, that's you know, tonight. but uh, to give you a good show to watch for fun, you know, cutesy type of stuff, ghosts. I love yeah. that series, Ghost. Is that the British one? That is the British one. Okay, I've seen this. This is a hoot. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun show to watch. Yeah, but for for media and, and the paranormal, um, it sucks. But I say this a lot. Nowadays, people need instant gratification. Mm -hmm. If they don't have that blip of their K two or the devil mm -hmm. in their in their ovulus twelve, then it's boring. On to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it it sucks. That's why all these there's all these flood of phone apps now. I think phone apps is absolutely yeah. destroying our our community and our and and what we're doing because nobody wants to sit in a room for two hours now. They just want the blip of that there's a ghost in the area so they can have their ring light up like this with their Facebook Live and saying that they found the next devil demon. And mm -hmm. it's not the way it is. Lock it it, it frustrates me seeing that. Especially on Instagram. Yeah. You Don't do it, Jake. Don't do it. It's going to say demon and you're going to no. want to move out of your new house. <laughs> did buy that way. Let me let me turn it up so we can. Is there a demon on the show tonight? Come on out. It said, dude, yes. Oh, there we boy. go. We've got a haunted show. They knew well, it. Let's just told Dave me. Scott. He is the demon, right? <laughs> 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 got to do what you got to do, gentlemen. Got to do what you got to do. But, that, yeah. but that's the thing right there. Like what Jake was doing, that that's the new ghost hunting. Like how, well, how can people even debate that that is evidence? It's not even, it's not even a debate. Well, people, yeah. I mean, look, the people who are doing this is because they either just want to believe or, you know, it, it's fast food ghost hunting, as you call it. It's the immediate gratification. Look at this it's, cool it's stuff. Fun. It's fun. You know? I mean, it, you know, this is where the weekend warrior comes in, but it, from the media topic itself, I mean, I think we've all agreed the shows have hyperbolized ghost hunting, right? And mm -hmm. then we've got the media, which is, I'll call it more mainstream media because they have been covering this stuff a bit more. Like you, I would be surprised on the crypto zoology side. I see a lot of main street, mainstream yep. media reporting on, you know, Bigfoot sightings and stuff and, uh, and other critters. Which is wow, ghost stuff. I mean, they kind of you know it's still October. That's when they do it. Um, it's kind of nice to have the coverage in, in the regular, in the regular field. Still, some of them it's the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Come on, it's that time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, when it comes to educating the public, you're right. I mean, most of the shows are just horrid with it. Um, the only one off the top of my head that even seems kind of rational and normal and don't roll your eyes, Ross, but it's Ghost Nation, Ghost Hunters, the one with, because they're not, they're not doing ovaluses. They're not freaking out horribly at the end of the day. It's like, yeah, there could be something here. It doesn't seem so, you know, and that show's doing just so fine. And I wouldn't say they're hyperbolizing. Mind you, I'm not defending them. I have dragged them over the coals in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, I, I understand exactly what you're saying with, they, they, they do things more, I, I can I use the word traditional, Ross? Regular, standard, regular. Or? Yeah, plain. I think we've vanilla. lost the sight of the traditional ghost hunt. I, I would agree. Just... That's what my rant was at the beginning. There, it's all instant didn't gratification. You, didn't you, Jake? Didn't you have a show that you wanted to talk about, though? 
Oh, that. Well, I mean, we we hit a lot of in. That's Ghost Brothers Lights Out. I just reviewed. I I did a couple of reviews, but I was going to focus on Ghost Brothers because it's pretty much everything that's wrong with with ghost hunting reality TV. Um. However, they had. I, I will say for Ghost Brothers, really great congenial cast. Like you, you I want to sit down. I want to do shots with these guys. Uh, they're fun. Uh, they get. I call it. They get great haunt porn. So they go into the best haunted locations that people don't normally get to see. So the one I reviewed was Yuma Territorial Prison. It's like a museum. Anyone can go into it really cool. at the end of the day. But when it comes to ghost hunting, I don't know if it's open for that. And they had a really great backstory about a woman that eviscerated her lover and got locked up. And her great grandson came to talk to granny. Hmm. And along the way, crazy stuff happened with demons and dark entities stuff stuff <laughs> stuff you don't have to beep that one dave <laughs> <laughs> did they actually say demons did they actually bring that in they had dark entities and cindy Kaza, you know psychic medium extraordinaire from the holzer files shows up and tells one of the guys you're a target for one of these dark entities it scares me i'm checking out and then you know the guy gets into a coffin in a graveyard and they do the little ringy bell test and that happens rings. all the time. Of course. Oh my God. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's the kind of thing, all the all the gadgets they use. I know people are just like, someone shut this guy up about the gadgets. But this is the this is the concept of face fast food ghost hunting that we have nowadays. They're using the gadgets where you're always gonna get a ghost. Ovilus, mm -hmm. spirit box, apps, SLS connect if used improperly, which they did. You know, and you're going to have a ghost and it's going to prove the stuff from that really great dark history that they covered. So, I mean, I, I don't blame them. Like in journalism, you got that. I forgot what it is where they do the recap that points back to something at the beginning to put a big zinger on the story. They do that very, very well. And I, it's a hoot to watch. I just groan through all the evidence they get. And that's my <laughs> bit on that show. Now, now for the SLS, because I'm going to pick your brain while we're on the radio. Yeah. What is the right way and wrong way to use it because like okay. i've witnessed people have it on a little handstand or they're running yeah, yeah. around with a you, little ring light no, you can't move you can't move with it um because it's yeah. trying to continuously map in the error handling within it because let me tell you it's a microsoft product microsoft does not cough up its source code for you to to custom i heard that it's like well it's custom no it's not it's it's the standard connect made by xbox slash microsoft okay and so what you got to do is it's just like when you're playing the game four to six feet above the ground, angled down about that way. You can't move it. You have to be six feet in front of it. It's got a range of six to, to 10 feet, just so you know. And really, it has to be perfectly used for that because it's used to map your shoulders, your neck, your head, your arms, elbows, mm -hmm. and hands. And they've got a mode, um, if you're sitting, where you can turn off the legs. Um, but you use that, and it maps. And anything that can trigger that pattern, it will show and map and that's right. why you get the crazy spider things on the shows for one thing it's way too far away the other thing is they're holding it it's constantly moving error handling is at work but mm. you can use it on a stand to map the area but still i don't know if a ghost is going to create a solid enough like cluster you know because we're solid right to actually map it correctly because that's a good way to think about it too. Yeah, actually, when you say it yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're solid enough, but this is why a lot of times you see it go off with a chair because it has like shoulders, a shoulder and arm kind of thing, especially with door frames. Because you and look windows. like a chair, Jake. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a squat little dude. I look like a chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's my bit. I flat my gums about this quite a bit, guys. So I mean, what, what's let, let's get back into the shows and and I would say, you know, how are they kind of screwing with the the amateurs, casual ghost hunters out there with with uh, their evidence and training? Merle, Who's good. <laughs> sorry, I hijacked Dave's show. Sorry, that's all right. No, you didn't. Right. Right. I'm just sitting here looking pretty right now. <laughs> That's all part of it, though. Everything you just said is, is what we've been talking about and what we always debate about and banter back and forth, like in messaging and all that sort of stuff. It's it's good to get it out so we can all talk about it. But no, the, the mainstream media, like I said earlier, 
it's all about the instant gratification. Like I, I bet you Ross has probably logged over a million hours sitting in a dusty room by himself. Oh, yeah. And that seems to be. And you are talking about going over evidence, right? Okay. Yes, that too. <laughs> Just double checking. That's the next part. <laughs> but 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 my point is, is not many people want to do that because they want to go and they they're too they're too focused on posting on Instagram right now what they're doing. They're focused on. I'm guilty. I post on Instagram all the time, but I have a stock of photos. Like you know, when you go to your baselines and that you take photos and all that. But like when I'm on an investigation, I'm I'm not thinking about posting photos of what I'm doing. Where I think photos and clout is is a big, I don't want to say the word problem, but I think it's the priority over evidence right now. Mm. Are, are we the, on to the next subject or are we still? No, no, we, no, got, we have five yeah. minutes. We got five right, minutes. All right. I just want to double check because we're kind of leading into that. You yeah, know, I, I, I'm holding exactly. back on you guys. Stop oh, we're foreshadowing. With, we're foreshadowing. Stay tuned. Stop with, the, right, gotcha. stop with the evidence talk. Let's get back to the shows of the media regarding... <laughs> Regarding what's real, what's not, what's fake, what should people pay attention to? You know, it's easy to focus on the negative of what the media is spinning, whether it's demons or a bunch of gear that's really expensive that people shouldn't go by. But let's look at some positives here. You know, what are some of the positives people could take out of the way the media and the shows are covering themselves and this topic? Well, I think one of the things is uh, I do like about the shows, in, in, in most cases, they do tend to you know, talk about the ghost stories, the history of the places. And, and I'm not saying all shows I've, I've witnessed quite a few shows where they'll make up history or go with the wrong information that's been proven to be wrong just to tell a better story. But like uh, Jake had said, you know, the, the haunt porn is, is nice because you do get to be introduced to a lot of great places that you probably didn't know were haunted. Um, so, so there's a plus you, you get to see a lot of great places and hear a lot of cool ghost stories if you're in for the ghost stories. So I, I do enjoy that every so often. Same for me. For me, it's the history. Um, that's how I judge paranormal shows. How well and how deep are they going to go into the investigation? I like to judge how much history they talk, how many witnesses they bring into interview, all of that sort of stuff to bring them to the actual investigation. That, that's what I like. I like I like them going to all these unknown places. Mm -hmm. And then not, I don't use the word expose. I don't know what else to use, but just bring to light um, things that have happened in the past. Like say there's a town called Sparkle, California that used to be a go like an old gold rush town, but nobody's ever heard it. And now you have Ross's team going in there and they're telling the actual story from the residents that's been passed down that that's what i appreciate in shows that's what i look for in media yeah the, go ahead i was gonna say and for me uh for one thing i just love the joie de vivre of the groups that go in to do ghost hunting because you could tell most of the folks there are really enjoying themselves and that really kind of amps me up right it makes me want to go on the next investigation but for me i actually like the shows uh for my own personal kind of training you hear the story Mm -hmm. You hear the witnesses, you hear the evidence, and then as they're going through this, I'm thinking about how would I collect evidence here? Which how to gadgets, apply it. What are, yeah, how to apply it, um, which gadgets, what I would look out for, um, you know, how I would go about collecting it all. Uh, so for me, that's, that's one of the big things that I like. But really, I love the haunt porn. <laughs> <laughs> Good old haunt porn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got one minute before we have to move on to the next subject. Ross Allison, Merle, and Jake are with us here on the Angry Ghost Hunter. So when it comes to the media, what's our closing, Merle? What, what should we pay attention to? What should we not? You should pay attention. Use your brain. Use your logic. Use actual things like basics, audio recorders, video cameras, a pen and paper. To log your stuff. That's what? What, you what? What, what, is, what is that? What? I have exactly. my phone. Uh, what? Just hold your brains there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that, that that's what I think people should take away. Don't go off the shows. Do your own research and and use base. Go back to basics. All right, let's move on here with the Angry Ghost Hunter heading into the final segment of tonight. We bring in Ross Allison, Jacob Rice, and Merle for the big show on the final Wednesday of every month where we warm up to Spaced Out Radio with the Angry Ghost Hunter. The final topic for you, fine gentlemen, tonight is evidence review. Do we do enough of it? 
Do we do it correctly? What should we be doing when going through evidence? Merle, your turn. One thing I like to tell people is if you don't have time to review your evidence, you don't have time to investigate. Um, I find evidence review very tedious, sometimes annoying, sometimes boring, but it's all part of the adventure to your investigation and for that research. Um, I find what I do now when I go on investigations, because like just like Ross and Jake, we all use like probably three to five cameras four or five audio recorders. We have all these devices rolling. Um, I know people just from talking get flustered with their evidence because they dump it all on their computer at once. <laughs> One thing I've had yeah, Jake laughs because he's probably done it too. I've done it. But you're like, Jesus, where do I start? And then you just avoid, <laughs> avoid, avoid. And that, that's what I'm famous for. I absolutely will avoid it like the plague if it's, oh. if it's flat like that. So what I tell people to do, bring a laptop and when it, say you're done room A, dump all your evidence onto the computer. And then if you do room B, like that. But you need to go through everything. You can't just go off your gut. Well, you can't depend on just that one EMF reading and then no. just go back and watch that one EMF reading to see if there's anything else. No, you get so a lot variable. of people, you get a lot of people doing that. They'll just only go back and watch the spots where they ex personally experienced something mm -hmm. and they think, okay, that's enough. I, I just went back and watched where I, I felt I was touched and you know, there was nothing there, or maybe there might've been an EVP there, but, but that's about it. That's all the reviewing they may do, mm -hmm. but there's just so much more than just, you know, that one spot. There's a lot of evidence that we could be experiencing that we're not aware is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And it is tedious and it is boring to have to go back and spend, you know, four hours investigating. Now you have to spend about another four hours to eight hours reviewing it. Yep. Uh, but that is so important. You know, even like Jake said, it's nice to have those various points of evidence to validate one encounter because it makes it more credible when Absolutely. you are able mm -hmm. to have other points of activity to validate that one encounter. And it may not be just, you know, the EMF reading. It may not just be, oh, I felt, you know, a breath on the back of my neck. You may go back and review that evidence or the video and you may actually see something there or the audio and you may hear something talking to you through an EVP. There's just so much more. And like I said, it may not even be just the situations where you didn't experience anything because there's been quite a few times when we've gone in and done an investigation and we spent hours and didn't have any experiences that we could talk about yep. offhand. That was but Friday. Then, yeah. And then you go back <laughs> and, and you review your, your videos and your audio and lo and behold, there is stuff there. Yep. So it is so important to take that time to review that stuff. Because, you know, if you're going to come into my house that I'm haunting and you're going to be asking me all these questions, I may not have the ability to set off your EMF detector or your little music box or your ovulus. You know, I, I just might be able to talk. Mm -hmm. And so I would be kind of ticked off if you came into my house, started asking me all these questions. I took the time to talk to you, but you never went back and listened to it. You know, truth. Mm -hmm. Or we are pressing, especially on EVPs, we are pressing what we think we hear on everybody yeah. else. It's not, hey, Mike, what do you hear on this? It's like, hey, Mike, I got, I'm coming for you. In the meantime, <laughs> it says, bring the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's true. Never give suggestive information until they listen to it first. Yeah. That's one of our biggest um, yep. protocols with our team is we always let people hear it first, and then you can tell them what you think you heard. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I will say with the ghosts, we're pretty good about, I'll call it, getting the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth opinions mm -hmm. on something. You know, <laughs> I know I'm not a ghost hunter, guys, but can I please make a suggestion? Go for it. Because I get people who send me photos all the time. Mm -hmm. For the love of God, don't send me the photos that have already had filters put into them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me the original photo yeah. unzoomed. I can zoom it in. I right. can change the filter if I want. I can manipulate the photo in order to potentially see something there. You know, I see it all the time in the paranormal world, in the Bigfoot world, where they're like, oh, look at look at that 
that image over there and, and you're looking and you're like, where? And all it is is a bunch of lines because it's been pixelated so poorly and then color <laughs> added to it to make pixel it look demon. to make it yeah. look like a pixel demon. Thank you, Merle. <laughs> and and it's ridiculous. Why can't you just send me the the original photo? That's all I want. You should save those photos. You should yeah. save those photos for this show. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And I, I don't see why they have to do that. I mean, at the end of the day, you got a G drive, right? Just upload it, you know, and send a link for everyone to check it out. All right. There you go. You know, it happens a lot. I, I get a lot of photos too. people trying to get me to validate that they are experiencing or they captured paranormal activity. And the sad fact is, is I can't validate anything. I wasn't there when the photo was taken. I can give you suggestions and I can even say, well, this could possibly debunk this, but I'm not going to give you my stamp of approval and say, yes, you've got a ghost. Thank you for sharing your photo. Because there's so many, even apps now on your phone mm -hmm. will put a ghost in your in your pictures or put a voice on your recordings. Mm -hmm. We are I, being manipulated as ghost hunters with the actual technology that we're dependent on. I did a ghost tour and this girl comes running up going, look what I found, look what I found on her phone. And it was like one of those ghost apps. But she uh, just had the photo up, and it had like a full body apparition beside the door. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded that app. I took mm -hmm. a photo, and I scrolled and found the right ghost for the moment. Put it, put it in the photo. I'm like, you mean this one? And then her face was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, mm, you debunk. know, Brian. insta debunk. <laughs> You know, and, and getting back on, on topic, you know, when it comes to evidence, it, it is so important to take the time to review the evidence because, again, we need those multiple data points to validate our encounters. And I know it, it's long and tedious to do it, but it is so important because we need to bring that credibility back. Like we said, you know, people are so focused now because of the television shows. They want that instant gratification. They don't want to do the work anymore. You know, because the television shows make it look so easy. And we know it's not that easy. There's a lot more work to it. It's a lot of boring hours sitting around waiting in the dark for something to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, uh, evidence reviewing is, is extremely important. And I can't express it enough. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys. So, I was just going to... Oh, go, go ahead, for it, Merle. No, Merle, you go. go. Nope. I no, I flap my gums. Okay, so I'll go. So how <laughs> I think about when collecting my evidence, and here's just a tip. Um, I kind of think about it as a director where I've got a camera. I got to make sure I have good audio, and then I need something to film, right? We'll call them actors. Those could be trigger objects. It could be like the Eddie Plus something because this gives me the chance to think about the three data points and also how long I recorded it for and at what times. So when you go back to review it, you know, at 10 o'clock, I shot this scene. This scene was the insane asylum, those baths where they plunge people into the ice, you know, the ice bath things. Okay. I was there for an hour. I started here. I've got a, you know, I got a timestamp on my camera. I got timestamp on my record, depending on the recorder. I mean, it's easy to say we're starting at 10, you know, your director go, you know, clap the thing, you'll have it. So you can sync and map everything when it happens. So when you go back to the review, it's not as intimidating. For one thing, if you're new, you can cheat. And if you if you had the video and you got the little sparkly thing to go off at a certain time, then you know how to stamp your audio and go to that point as well. Mm -hmm. And so it just makes management of reviewing your evidence simpler, you know? And the other thing is cameras have mics and you had, an, had, had a good audio recorder, they should, well, sometimes they match, sometimes they don't match, right? It's the supernatural. But still, that's the way I think about going about doing my evidence so it doesn't seem all that intimidating. I'm reviewing a scene. I'm mm -hmm. reviewing another scene. By the time you're done reviewing your four scenes, hey, I mean, not so bad. Pretty manageable mm -hmm. on the computer, too. That, What's that's your my turnaround? Too. What's your guys' turnaround <laughs> for evidence to a client? What is, uh, here, let I, me rephrase I, I'm, that. I, I'm a never, I, I might be an outlier here. So, yeah, you awesome. know, Jake is awesome. <laughs> Jake, Jake is one of those guys that as soon as he gets home after the investigation, could be three, four o'clock in the morning, he's right away starting reviewing things. 
you know, the next day we'll have a presentation on, you know, the investigation. <laughs> so kudos to him. Uh, you don't always get those type of investigators, but I've always told people a reasonable amount of time is about 30 days. You know, we got to understand that we're all volunteers here. Mm -hmm. We have our day lives, jobs to take care of. You know, we can't just drop everything for the full-time ghost hunt. Um, so I always tell people, our clients, you know, at least give us 30 days to review things. I think that's a healthy enough time for, for you to take the time to review your evidence, whether you just do it, you know, one hour a day just to review something until you've gone through all your footage and audio. Yeah. I mean, the, the one thing, though, I think that we have to acknowledge is a lot of the software we use to do the analysis is not easy for a lot of folks just to use. I mean, there's a learning curve for it. Um, I think we should acknowledge that it's, you know, slow down, learn, learn it right, how to do everything. I agree. And, and keep your source files. That's the big thing. Because like now I do a lot of video. Um, Dave, I know we've talked about this in the past. I, you know, I got it nailed down. I can cut a clip real quick, but it took me months to get to that point. Okay. 100%. So take, take it easy. I, I find audio editing to be a bit easier, um, but still you have to be able to ramp up the sound to hear it. You know, have to take out that hiss because when you amp up the, the sound, you're going to get that hiss with it. You got to pull it back a little bit. Sometimes you got to know how to use EQ to, to pull out the voice from the background. That all takes time and there's nothing wrong with playing around and screwing it up because a lot of that stuff's non-destructive. It won't alter mm -hmm. your files. And the big thing is it. learn it before you go out in the field. So take your microphone right. on your phone or your digital voice recorder and record five, six minutes of audio. Mm -hmm. That's all you need, if that. And then go play around with your editing gear. Editing mm -hmm. audio is extremely simple. and mm -hmm. At least for me, it is. Video, whole different ballgame. <laughs> but for me, audio, because I've been doing that for the last 20-some years, it's second nature to me. All right? But it takes nothing to just play around with, you know, read a couple paragraphs from a book or a TV guide, if they still make those, or or the <laughs> latest smut magazine that you can find at your grocery store. That's all you need to do. And then, you know, every screw up you make, instead of saying, you know, women rule the world, you say, whoa, well, man, you know, make that edit. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. And that's how you make your audio cuts mm -hmm. better. And yeah. once, once you figure it out, then go into the field. Because the last thing that you want to do, guys, is, is to go out in the field, grab some incredible EVPs or potential great EVPs, and you accidentally lose them and butcher them because you don't know how to use your audio or mm -hmm. video editors. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah, and whisper a lot. It's ghost hunting. The EVPs sound like whispers. So practice on whispers and how to improve the sound of that whisper. That'd probably be your best use case That's for audio editing. That's actually a good editing. technique. Yeah. Gentlemen, we have just over one minute left here on this month's edition of the Angry Ghost Hunter. And we want to say thank you to Cat Chaser for the awesome super chat. We love the support. And we also want to say a big thank you to Ross Allison for putting together this great show, a great team with Jacob Rice and Merle. Yes, Merle Necklace is what he <laughs> is right now. All right. You've changed it like four times. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Every time it'll be one. But gentlemen, as we wrap things up, what is the message to end this month's show? Ross. Well, I, I definitely want to tell people don't uh, go into the whole thing of YouTube subscriptions and TikTok. Those are the worst, <laughs> <laughs> especially when they're fishing for subscriptions and they, they do those, uh, those uh, fake, uh, what do they call it? When fishing to get you to tr click the fishing for clicks and stuff. Clickbait. Clickbait. Click yes. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, those are the worst when it comes to looking for paranormal evidence. Um, but again, um, if you're going to get into this field, um, take it serious. Um, don't try to imitate what you're seeing on all those television shows. Um, Learn from people that have had experience because people like me who've been doing it as long as I have, I can give you the shortcuts. Absolutely. And, and Jacob, your final word. So to everyone out there, just practice, 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 
Find a piece of equipment you like, you might have an affinity for it, learn how to use it great, learn how to use the software to edit, and go make some ghostly magic. Not fake stuff, real stuff. <laughs> and final word for you, Merle. Uh, same thing Ross says, except I'll add, keep it simple. Um, learn one piece of gear at a time. And audio, audio, do lots of audio. That's it. And my final word for everybody, even though mo the majority of people out there are like me, we're not ghost hunters, we are enthusiasts. Don't fake title yourself. Be who you are. And if you have any questions, I will tell you this. The real pros in this field, like Merle, like Jake, like Ross, like David Weatherly, they are very approachable to your learning. They want you to get better, and they are willing to help. So don't ever be afraid about reaching out if you have a question, because that's what they want. If you want to improve your ghost game, ask. If you have a ghost team out there that will not answer your questions, they're full of shit anyways. All right? <laughs> Let's just be honest. Gentlemen, thank you so much for another exciting edition of the Angry Ghost Hunter. We will talk to you at the end of July. Ross Allison, Merle, and Jacob Rice. Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.